I want to thank you for this amazing honor, Research Exclamation Point America. Uh, Dr. Zahuni and Dr. Manjai for, these, for those generous introductions. Uh, and of course, the amazing Mary Woolley. So last week, when we paid tribute to, to Ronald and Nancy Reagan's love story, I was once again reminded that Alzheimer's is an equal opportunity killer. It can take down a president as easily as a postman. My mother was larger than life. She could capture a room just by entering it. JFK credited her with winning the crucial state of New Jersey for him. She was even named to Nixon's enemy list, I say proudly. <laughs> Nothing could defeat my mom, but she was no match for Alzheimer's. I watched this lioness of a woman disappear into the unforgiving vortex of this disease, a disease that leaves no prisoners. In 2004, I met with Senator Hillary Clinton and told her this story. In 1987, when I was writing for the TV sitcom Designing Women, the brilliant creator Linda Bloodworth Thomason and I learned the same week that our mother had a fatal disease. My mom had Alzheimer's. Linda's mother had AIDS from a transfusion. Within six months, Linda's mother was dead. Five years later, my mom was gone. If that happened today, Linda's mother would live and my mom would still die. We need the same passion and voice that AIDS sufferers had. But Alzheimer's patients can no longer speak. We are their voice. We are their voice. Hillary got it like that and became head of the Senate Task Force for, on Alzheimer's. Okay, so I hear Hillary has moved on, <laughs> though not with incorporating a detailed strategy for Alzheimer's in her platform. My role in life used to be to cancel my Republican husband's vote. <laughs> not pretty, but no longer. Now we are the Alzheimer's party. We welcome every candidate to come to our party. In 2010, almost 25 years after my mom was diagnosed and nothing had changed, George and I started Us Against Alzheimer's to bring a new level of personal passion and urgency to this fight. Merrill Comer and John Dwyer were our co-founders. Merrill has been caring for her husband at home for 20 years and her mother with Alzheimer's for six. Let's face it, sainthood is not far behind. John's big Irish family is riddled with Alzheimer's. And why George? Well, he's got a wife, a daughter, and two granddaughters. He did the math because two-thirds of the victims of Alzheimer's and two-thirds of their caregivers are women. Both my grandmother and my mom succumbed to it. I do not like this trajectory. That's why we founded Women Against Alzheimer's. So now, let me introduce you to my divine husband who is saving the world. The only thing he has ever failed is retirement. <laughs> While our sense of passion and urgency comes from a personal place, which Trish has described, the growing prevalence and cost of this disease gives our mission a larger purpose. The Alzheimer's epidemic will be the death sentence for over 100 million people around the world in the coming decades. And it will infect hundreds of millions more family members emotionally and financially. The staggering cost to taxpayer-supported medical and social support systems will crowd out public investments in education, infrastructure, and public safety. As we've heard tonight, equaling or more than equaling the defense budget. Together, we must confront Alzheimer's at a pace and a scale equal to its challenge. So we seek to build an Alzheimer's movement to disrupt business as usual through those, initially, uh, those most dramatically affected by this disease, women, African Americans, Latinos, and caregivers. Our name, Us Against Alzheimer's, reflects this belief in the power of a movement of individuals to affect change. As our co-founder, Merrill Comer, puts it, we must flip the pain into action. Beyond advocating for change, we feel the need to be the change for which we advocate. With many of you in this room, Us Against Alzheimer's is collaborating nationally and globally 
with governments, industry, and researchers, including the WHO, OECD, the G7. We are intentional about creating what my good friend and colleague from Janssen, Luke Troyan, calls a continuum of collaboration through the entire global drug development ecosystem, turning the insights of basic research into innovative medicines, tested into standardized, faster, and more efficient clinical trial network, accessible to diagnose populations, rich and poor, at home around the world. We remind ourselves every day that the first person cured of Alzheimer's will be in a clinical trial. And stirred by the loss of members, uh, family members and friends, that the well-being of those with or at risk of the disease are at the center and the purpose of all of our efforts. Defeating Alzheimer's is a team sport. So many of you here tonight are team members. Dr. Harold Varma served on the high-profile Alzheimer's study group that first recommended a national strategic plan uh, for Alzheimer's uh, in 2009. Dr. John Noseworthy, actually more than adequately represented by a partner in so many efforts, Ron Peterson. Uh, but the Mayo Clinic is a partner with us in the first Alzheimer's patient and caregiver powered research network. As you've heard tonight, Senator Roy Blunt and Congressman Tom Cole are champions for increased NIH investment in Alzheimer's. Our entire dedicated team at Us Against Alzheimer's. Our industry partners in the Global CEO Initiative on Alzheimer's and the academic, industry, and foundation participants in the Global Alzheimer's Platform Foundation. Uh, calling out here tonight's stars, Janssen Pharmaceutical and Eli Lilly for their uh, visionary and committed um, uh, efforts in the, moving the entire field forward, uh, even as they are testing their own drugs. Uh, the Co Coalition of Leaders Engaged in Alzheimer's Disease, with now 83 members, all mobilized to bring the Alzheimer's community together uh, as one voice uh, to serve uh, for uh, mobilization uh, and advocacy. And I have got to mention uh, a great partner in this effort on the other side of the government private line, Dr. Richard Hodes, for his extraordinary leadership and partnership in the efforts uh, to get at and defeat uh, this disease. Together, we can succeed in defeating this toxic and cruel destroyer of families. Our confidence is rooted in the committed and sustained partnerships with the teams of world-class scientists, entrepreneurs, advocates, uh, many of whom are in this room tonight, with whom we share the mission to relieve the staggering human suffering caused by Alzheimer's. And as Jill Lesser, the president of our Women's Network says, we won't wait. And most importantly, I get to do this with the woman I love and the partner of my life. We are grateful and humbled to receive the Laura and Gordon Gund Award. We thank Research America. Thank you, Mary Woolley. Uh, we thank you, Dr. Zerhouni and Nanji. And thank you all here tonight for your friendship and support as we go on this battle together. Thank you. <clears throat>